Okay, here on Metal Talk Net, we're um, I'm talking to Pete French, lead singer of Leaf Hound. How are you, Pete? All right. It's a Sunday afternoon and it's early, so. <laughs> and the um, reason why we're here, like two days ago, you played the Bald Line in London. Yeah. And uh, you played the uh, Growers of Mushroom album in its entirety. Yeah, that was a buzz. I never would have uh, ever dreamt when I recorded it, when I was only two years old, of course, 40 years ago. But uh, there I would have been on the stage doing the whole set. And knowing that other bands have done the songs from it recently and uh, going down apparently very, very well with the audience. Uh, tremendous compliment. Yeah. Tremendous I was like, it's a highly influential album, and the album came out 40 years ago yeah. in 1970. So tell us about the origins of the album. What do you remember from recording that album? Uh, well, the actual album came out in 71 actually, on a published uh, thing oh. with the uh, sleeve, you know, the first Decker album. The irony of it was, we actually recorded it way before then. We recorded it um, early 70 because um, the album wasn't released. The band broke up because the album wasn't going to come out. It came out approximately about a year and a bit later after we recorded it. So it was well ahead of its time in that genre of rock, really. You know, we didn't know at the time it was going to be, but it just happened to be. You know. And obviously, like I say, um, Decker put the album out. Yeah. You, you, sort of, you went out on tour, you supported yeah. UFO in Germany. Yeah. But by the, time, tour, but, yeah. by the time I put the album out, you had disbanded. Well, yeah, because, uh, you know, my cousin and I wrote most of the material. Uh, Mick Halls, uh, who just, by the way, uh, was on American cover of uh, Guitar Magazine. America was a legendary guitarist, so he's, he's, he's having his little bit of glory as well. And he lives in the States now. And, uh, yeah, we, we sort of, like, uh, did a brief tour of it. It was really happening. It was really great. Got back home, and the... Uh, pair of clowns that was meant to be looking after us and getting this deal sorted out and everything else was absolutely disastrous. So um, so the band broke up, you know, and then the rest of it is history, of course. Mick went his way, I went my way, and we all did different things, you know. And, and that stayed in the archives, mm. you know. I'll say, I, I believe Van, you went to uh, Atomic Rooster for a while, then Cactus. Well, yeah, we even preceding Atomic Rooster, I was with Cozy Powell. With That's right, birth, birth, course, yeah. you know, So we gave that a whack. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's quite funny because Cozy and me um, left Big Bertha. It was a good band, but it, it, we just couldn't really get the thing to sort of like go somewhere. So Cozy came down and stayed with me at my place in London. And while he was down in London, the pair of us, remarkably, I went with him to buy his first drum kit, his Red Sparkle one, because he got an audition with uh, Jeff Beck. He joined the Jeff Beck group at exactly the same time Vincent Crane and asked me to join Atomic Rooster. <laughs> so we just couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Just coming back to London was one of the best things that Coase and me did at yeah. the time. Yeah. And of course, at the time you had your career ahead of you and say, so Girls and Mushroom Album was forgotten about in a yeah, time. Yeah, that, that was uh, a very treasure. Over time, it's come up an iconic album. It's like reached cult yeah. status in many ways. Hasn't yeah, it, it is. And yeah. why do you think that is? Well, <laughs> it's easy to blow your own trumpet in this business. Uh, uh, I hope I'm talking straight. I mean, from what I've read of the reviews, have been tremendously complimentary, five-star reviews and all that, which I don't take the pinch of salt. I think it's absolutely wonderful accolade, personally, to, to all the boys. You know. and, um, and secondly, because it's rare on the actual vinyl mm. front, but it's still selling on the CDs, mm. so, and it's still getting reviews, and it's still, you know. Uh, and it was upon that actual basis that all those years later, after I'd done a Cactus and all the other bands and the solo projects and God knows what else from Harry Pie in Germany and everything. Um, the, everybody sort of said, well, we've ever thought about putting a, another Leaf Hound together. Well, I did, and before the actual one I've got now, I actually was considering, oh, we had a couple of quick rehearsals. I had a guy called Dominique on drums. I had um, uh, John Ivan from the Yardbirds on lead guitar and I had Ray, uh, sorry, on bass guitar and I had Ray Majors I mean, Arbos was going to be the lead guitar, mm. and we had a couple of little workouts, and I thought, oh, I don't know, and I went away, and, uh, and I buried it again, thinking it was a bit of an over-ambitious idea, maybe it won't work. And, uh, and then it all surfaced again, and then, as you know, uh, Jim approached me at a nightclub, and uh, amazingly, it went from there, and Jim, Jimmy Rowan and the drummer, and then we got the other players and everything else, and uh, I was pretty knocked out with what the sound was like. Mm. And it sounded fresh again. Because the current incarnation of Leaf Hound has been together like five, six years now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Time There's flies. a good relationship in the band. And we did the new album, Unleashed, which I'm very proud of, actually. Yeah. Very proud of, because I had the uh, the job of thinking, it's, it's great in having all this accolades, and what a that fabulous band, and this great album, Grows a Mushroom. Uh, that's them talking, not me, mm -hmm. although, of course, I respectfully admire 
to mine up. Uh, but then we did Unleash, and I thought, well, this has really got to be up to the bar. Because there's nothing worse mm. than coming back and doing an inferior product or something that don't match it. To my absolute relief, um, I first you got to believe in yourself to do it when we did it. Um, co wrote most of the songs this time with Luke at the time, mm. instead of my cousin, of course. So, uh, to my delight, um, it came out great. We released it. And that got great reviews as well. It yeah, got really. great yeah. reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, everything from Metal Hammer yeah. to Sounds to everywhere got fantastic reviews. The unfortunate thing was it was never advertised because at that time there was a diffusion within the record company it was going to be Rare Records and, mm. and all the advertising and tours that was meant to be sort of uh, arranged to give it a bit of a launch never materialised. So um, it's there, it's real. Um, we, we've done some gigs incorporating that new material with the old. It goes down a storm. People love it just as much as the old. Mm. So, you know, uh, we're having to advertise it ourselves pretty much. Yeah. You know? But it's it's good. It's a good product. So I, I really stand by it. You know. Yeah. And um, like I say, we just did a gig at the Borderline. He played the Grows Mushroom album in his party, and uh, there's two songs they have never performed live in the history of Lee Fan. That was Work My Body and Sawdust Season. Yeah. How did those songs go then for you? Because I thought Work My Body was fabulous. Thank you. I mean, it, thanks. It's really nice to hear that. Of course, it's a particular favourite of mine actually. Uh, and for the band, the new band, or is it as such that Lee Fan. They're always hes hesitant to play it because it's got just a couple of organ bars in it. And I said, this is absolutely toffee apples, you know, like, it's a great song, you know. You, we did Vincent Crane's version of um, Breakthrough, Breakthrough on the new album. You, we, we rewrote that and you've got the guitar structure instead of keyboards. We just do this on this. And we did, and it worked, as you heard, and mm. thanks for the compliment, it worked great. And the other one, Sawdust Caesar, well, it's not my favourite track, I'll be perfectly honest. But uh, it, it jangles along and it's part of the thing that you feel you have to do if you're going to do the set, mm. you know. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's all right, it's all right. It's not my favourite one, it doesn't it? That's probably my and, least uh, favourite on the album. You know, what, what sort of memories does the Grow as a Mushroom album bring back to you? Like I say, it was 40 years ago, it was a long time, you were a young man. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, back then you didn't think you'd be singing this album when you were no, it, it's, 40 uh, years later. I can honestly say it's a truly unique experience. I don't know of anybody actually that's gone back and done a set mm. and something in the same keys as well, I might sound quite proud <laughs> to be able to do uh, and do all those songs again 40 years later and still go down extremely well. Mm. I mean, it's accolade in itself really, it's just nice, it's nice to get that reaction. Yeah. I never would have believed it. You know. And uh, the opening song, Freelance Fiend, is now a song that's been covered by a few bands like Orange Goblin to name what one. And in and, films. Uh, Yes, I'm yeah. saying, and there's, it's been used in two films now. There's another film coming out yeah. soon. Um, yeah, a, a rather. Uh, Nipples and palm trees. Yeah, it's it's going to be like one of sort of cold, quite sure where that films. film's yeah. going myself. I know it's going to Cannes, yeah. and whether it gets canned or whether it goes somewhere else, I don't know. But uh, still a compliment. Yeah. It's all a compliment. Yeah. So it's quite nice. And uh, it must amaze you as well, like the amount of younger fans yeah. who are rediscovering Lee yeah. Found, you know? Well, I love classic rock. Uh, I, I, I'm. I'm I'm not into the very, very metal over the top, you know, everybody's going to come down the mountains and kill everybody type thing. I mean, mm. you know, Thin Lizzy did that years ago and did it wonderfully better than probably anyone. Uh, but I always like, um, I've always been a great fan of bands like um, White Snake, um, Deep Purple, um, the, you know, classic rock icons, you know, mm. Zeppelin, I mean, all those that to me they were mainstay for me, The Who, even, I love, love them. So, um, it's nice to do classic rock, you know. I think in many ways, when the album originally came out, a lot of people sort of referred it to like Led Zeppelin sounding, Led Zeppelin yeah. mixed cream kind of sound, wasn't it? Yeah, that's because there's certain little parts, I suppose, retrospectively looking at it, that seem like it's the same. Completely accident, if it is. And mm. You have to take your face value on that. It was a complete accident. But then again, I don't think Led Zeppelin can say too much because I think Led Zeppelin went to the um, little black boys catalogue of yeah. uh, history of music and <laughs> put <laughs> fantastic job, but uh, you know, uh, there was a few, a few curves <laughs> yeah. there somewhere. You know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what plans are there in the future for Lee Fan? Because like, if there's any Lee Fan fans out there don't, don't want to see this grow as much I mean, it's tired to, I believe you're playing the Roadburn Festival in Hobbs. Yeah, Hobbs. yeah, we're absolutely delighted to have been invited to play at the Roadburn next April. Uh, we did it some five or six years ago and we loved it and went down very well and um, they really want us back to do this because a lot of heads over there that like that classic rock stuff and um, we're also there's a lot of things the problem in show business as you know is a lot of talk and you promised all sorts of things when it comes to fruition on gigs and things I don't know but we're, we're, we're doing the All Pie Club 
shortly. In this That's month. in Twickenham. Yeah, Twickenham. That's on the what date? You know? uh, November the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Mm. So you played the album in its entirety again that night, eh? We probably will. Yeah. We, I mean, as you know, on the gig as well, we threw in a couple of the new tracks as well. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll probably do that, the same sort of I'm thing. I look forward to that. And then we're doing, um, we're playing down at, um, God, where is it we're playing in January? Chatham, we're playing, uh, playing Bollywine Productions, we're putting a song in Chatham uh, with Stray. Uh, we're doing a classic, classic rock extravaganza. Uh, and we're doing a couple more of those in February and in March as well. I think one's in Kent, the other one's going to be at Hastings. Mm. And uh, then we're hoping, because there's a guy brought a rock book out who also wants me to um, get the band to possibly go to Italy, and there's talk of a, a short Scandi come uh, German tour. Mm. Well, I lived in Hamburg for three years, and I'd love to go yeah. back yeah. and do some gigs there again. So who knows? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm just very, very uh, thrilled and very, very pleased to have some recognition yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, really, you know, it's nice. I was like, it was great, it was absolutely an excellent gig at the Borderline the other night, and um, I'm, I'm sure really the officers will come flooding in. I'm and, pleased uh, you enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I must say, the Borderline is a very nice club to play. Yeah. They looked after us well, uh, all compliments to them. And um, it's a tough business. I mean, you know, as you know, with all the, all the pirate and all the stuff going down, mm. it's a very tough business to keep your head above all. Well, Pete French, it's been fantastic talking to you. I wish you all the Thanks best for the for, chance. Uh, found and um, grows a mushroom. You know, everyone should have an collection. Thanks, Mark. Thanks very much. Talk all the best. Soon. Cheers. Cheers.